My name's Clinton Findlay. I joined the Army in 1995 and I spent 19 and a half years in Army before I was medically discharged. I spent two and a half years of my life in East Timor and as a soldier and we're here at the Australian War Memorial in the East Timor section and we're having a look at the War Memorial today. So this year is the year of the Indigenous servicemen and the War Memorial's done a fairly good job at trying to promote that and to have people understand what happened. But one thing that's very interesting to note is that around the pool of reflection and the eternal flame, there are 26 animal heads up on that wall. Two of those animal heads are of Aboriginal faces, an elder man and a woman. We need to think about where the idea of hanging heads on walls come from and what it actually means. The practice of hanging heads on a wall goes back in my culture to taking animal trophies from a hunt and putting the best ones on the wall. It's a way of memorialising the past. But in my culture, it was a long time ago that we took human heads, we only took animal heads. To take a symbol of defeating another person, we took the arms or the banner or the flag of the people that we were fighting. The reason I don't like putting human heads next to animal heads, other than the fact that it's dehumanising one particular group of people, is that when I was in army, one of the first lessons that we were taught is that regardless of where we came from, what our background was, what our race or religion was, we were all now green skin. We all belonged to the army tribe. We were together and we could re rely on each other regardless of any other consideration. And I think that when we reflect on the terrible genocides of Aboriginal people within this country, we can see that it is going to be a sensitive topic for other people. One of the very important things that soldiers are taught is not only are there formal rules of engagement for how we conduct ourselves within a theatre of operations, there's also the way that soldiers treat other soldiers and enemy combatants. We are taught, quite simply, you do not desecrate bodies. You treat bodies with respect. They are people's sons and daughters. They are human beings. You do not disrespect bodies on a battlefield. You treat them with the same respect you treat your own fallen. One of the things we might like to take responsibility for is to have a think about the treatment of Aboriginal people within this country. When Philip led the first fleet here, one of the first things that he did was he sent out people with Hessian sacks with orders of taking 40 heads to be placed on poles to sow a universal terror within the hearts of the Aboriginal people so that they would not oppose the white settlement. This country is covered in so many massacre sites. In many cases, those massacre sites still have bones left to be trampled over by gas vehicles and hooves. It's not a pretty part of our past. It's a part of our past that we need to embrace, but we also need to make sure that we learn from it and we start being decent to one another. Maybe we should have a think about the fact that if we've got our feet on this land, we don't need to be perpetuating the sins of the past. So the War Memorial comes from a, a predominantly white culture. And in the year of indigenous service, there's a lot of indigenous celebration going on within the war memorial. But this is not a white person talking about black person's business. I wouldn't dare to do that. This is about a white person talking about white people's business. I think we're responsible for having a think about the leftovers of the past and doing our own house cleaning. Why should the burden of fixing the leftover racist imagery that we see 
Why should that burden be left to Aboriginal people? Aboriginal people have got their business. And I think we should be responsible for what our culture imposes upon other people and say, you know, this is just not right anymore. It should be respectfully retired and it should be taken down. I'd like to invite people to have a think about what I've said, to have a look at the imagery that's been displayed, to even write to the War Memorial, to ask them for their opinions and how they've approached it. But most importantly, if you don't like to put some humans up with animals and classify them all as animals, maybe we should do something about it. Maybe we should think about it, contact the War Memorial and say, you know, this is just not on, not anymore.